see what is happening, how you feel about antiderivatives. I hope you had plenty of time to look at, or if not, then you at least relaxed and recharged and enjoyed the few days of without the class. So let's see. I believe we had a quiz somewhere here. And let's see if I can find those problems where we stopped at. <clears throat> I think it's previous. If you remember, you can remind me. I believe it was this page where we looked yeah. at the exercise where I just made up a little problem for you, right? So let us try, I think it was from zero to one, e to the power of x dx, something like that. So the point was not just to find the antiderivative, but also to plug in the upper and the lower limits in it. So I need to replace my variable x with one, and then with a zero and subtract those two from each other. And we get a E minus one because power of zero where any expression is one. And this way we got the result. So here we have the little quiz exercise from a while ago. I believe that's what we had on the quiz. I guess what I'd like to do is move back to the section that we spent quite some time on. That was section where we did the substitution into the antiderivatives. So this will be 4.5. And we stopped at one place where we got this definite integral starting. So let's say exercise like number 45, for example. So I'm back in the section four or five that we already spent, I think, plenty of time, but now we're gonna do more problems here with so-called definite integrals that have limits on the top and the bottom. Like in exercise 45, we integrate x multiplied by x squared plus one. And this is raised to the power of five in the parentheses dx. So I want to try to take a look at this antiterrative. So let me do this in just one second. Okay, so yeah, I'm back. So I just need to take care of one thing real quick. So looks like what we always used to do is replace parentheses with new variable letter. And that was basically the rule. So you have parentheses, you replace this parentheses with new variable. And then you take its derivative. So this will be two times x, right? Multiplied by dx. And on the other side, we always have a du. And then we'll be able to get a new variable in our integral, such as a u raised to the power of five, because this power of five is what we raising our parentheses in, and then also remaining x and dx that here was number two, and that's why I'm gonna divide by two on both sides. So du over two is what we're going to have multiplied by that u to the power of five. So why I did this? Well, because this way I can utilize the formula for 
antiderivative. Remember the formula, because otherwise there is no way we can find the antiderivative. So I only use formulas, and the formula says take that u to the power of n plus one and divide by n plus one, and also plus the constant. So that's the letter u. I wrote it in an odd way. Now it's better. So one half is going to be present and multiplied by my antiderivative because now I have fifth power of u. So this is going to be power of six, right? Five plus one, six, and I divide by six. But I don't put this plus the constant because we have a different kind of exercise. We have the integral to work with. So my denominator is going to be 12 and the parentheses, which is raised to the power of six, will contain my original variable x squared plus one. And then I'm to use the limits that we had originally such as zero and one so i'm gonna replace my letter x with those limits so let's do that so for the first for the upper limit i'm going to use one and put this into my expression that we produced here and then for the second Part that I subtract, I'm using the lower limit zero. I just replace x with these limits and then need to simplify and produce the answer. So it looks like from two to the power of six, and that's 64, I have to subtract just number one raised to the power of six. It's still one, so it's going to be 63 that I'm still to divide by 12. So it looks like in this exercise, I got lucky because the limits were zero and one, and those are nice numbers that I can work with, the nicest probably, because usually we don't have such nice numbers. So limits could be all kinds of numbers. But the key point is we find antiderivative, and then we plug the upper and lower limit, and that's pretty much all these sections are talking about. So I'd like to do another exercise here, show you that the, all of these problems are very, very similar. So I'm going to look at exercise number 15 with numerator and denominator of the fraction that I have to integrate. And remember, when we integrate, we always replace our denominator with a new variable letter u. So parentheses or denominator if you don't have parentheses. So let me do this. Let me see what's going to come out. Denominator x squared plus 3x is going to be now called as new variable letter u. And then I take its derivative, and this is going to be 2x for x squared, right? Two goes on the ground. And 3x derivative is just 3x disappears. And I also attach dx to it, and this is equal to du. And looks like we have it. We have precisely what we needed to replace, because here in my denominator, now I'm going to have variable letter u and the rest which is numerator multiplied by dx is exactly what we have here that stands for du so i can find the antiderivative and get the answer and this is going to be remember ln of u right ln of u and notice this was a definite integral from one to three. So I don't just put plus the constant and that's it. I actually need to take care of this upper and lower limits. So it's x squared plus three times x, right? 
and then I need to use this lower number one and the upper number three instead of x. Okay, so let us plug this in. So three squared plus three times three is for the first one, parentheses, minus, and then we subtract again. Ln, we have one squared plus three times one. Yeah, whatever will come out, I'll write as the answer. Looks like it's 99, which is 18. And then we subtract with three and one, which is four. Just like that. Some people may say we can write as ln as 18 divided by four or something like that. Yeah, you can do that, but I guess that's good enough. We already found our antiderivative. And if somebody wants exact answer, you can always put in the calculator, remember. But I guess it's not going to look very nice in decimals. So not many people get happy when they see it. So that's why it's fine that you just leave it like that. So I would say enough with this section because we already spent plenty of time on it and uh, the rest the next page i'm not asking you to worry about it says use graphing calculator so you don't have to worry about it and now i want to move on to the next interesting section that deals with a formula analog of derivative of a product remember how we used to set it up u prime v plus v prime u and that's technically what they have here so they put v prime on the first place with u and then u prime on the second with v so this derivative of product turns out has analog when you integrate so they say if you integrate something like uh u times dv then you're going to have a uv minus integral of v du okay, what is this well if you can't integrate if you can't if there is a product of two functions that you can't find a good substitution to integrate well then there is a formula and they actually showing how this comes out right from the derivative of product shown above and the formula is right here udv is equal to a difference of these two pieces so i know when you see it first time it doesn't look very attractive so my goal for today is to do a few problems and then i hope you will feel a little bit better about this formula so for example i can take a look at one of the problems that they worked out for us here like example two that deals with a integral of x multiplied by ln of x so what they want to do here maybe i'll take a look at example one because this one is a little bit more advanced i think example one will be a little bit better so if they integrate it doesn't really matter ln x times dx then we're going to look at the example two and the problem is that we don't have the way to integrate ln. So Alex, I remember something that we used to take a derivative of ln and produce one over x. And yes, we can take derivative of ln, but not antiderivative. And that's why, since we can take a derivative of ln, I'm going to call it as analog of letter u. 
and dx will be analog of dv. In fact, I'm going to write it down here. Ln x is now letter u, and uh, dx now is dv. So now I need to set up this difference. And to be able to set up this difference, I need to have du, and that's what I produce when I take derivative on the left side. So if I put one over x, derivative of ln with dx is equal to du. Say I produce that du that I needed if I take derivative. And also I need to have v. Since I have dv, then to find v, I need to take antiderivative. Because if I anti-differentiate number one, I just get that variable. And same on the other side. And it turns out that now I'm ready to write this formula. So I need to multiply u by v, those two pieces. And that'd be ln x multiplied by x. So I just plug in the formula, minus. Now formula says multiply v and du. So my v is here and du is here. So I need to multiply x by one over x dx. So why do I do this? Well, the reason why is because now I can integrate. People usually put x in the front of ln x. And then notice that x is in denominator and x is in numerator multiplied. So they cancel. So you just need to integrate dx. So I was able to produce the function that I can actually integrate. And that's the point. So x ln x will stay. There is no integral, so it doesn't matter. Minus, so I subtract from it, just letter x, because that's antiderivative of 1 dx, because derivative of x is 1. And of course, plus the constant. And that's exactly what they produced here as a result. So it looks like we are to use derivatives in order to help us to find the antiderivative. And that's really all it is in this section. So today I just want to do a few exercises to get used to this structure. uv minus integral of vd. Just like derivative of product. It was also tedious. Remember u prime v, v prime u. So it's kind of the same thing. So we're not going to hurry. I guess just little by little I'm going to practice. So let me try exercise number one. That would be a good start. In this exercise, we have a product of two functions. One of them is 4x, and the other is e raised to the power of 4x, dx. So the problem is that I cannot find the antiderivative because I could find antiderivative if that would be just e to the power of x, right? Because that's exactly the same thing, e to the x plus the constant. But the problem is that we have extra x or 4x multiplied by it. And that's why I can call it as a letter u, and the rest will be dv. The reason I like to call 4x as letter u is because when I take a derivative of it, that 4x is going to disappear and just give us 4 with dx, which is equal to du. Because the issue is that we have a product of two functions that both have x. But now, if I take a derivative of one piece, 
then well that x is going to be this uh, is going to disappear so we're no longer going to have letter x and then we'll find antiderivative and we'll be done just look at this so now the other piece i have to integrate so first i always differentiate and second i always integrate so antiderivative of e to the power of 4x is the same thing but remember four goes in denominator we used to check this out by taking derivative of this result and if you take that 4x and the power will by chain will multiply by four so the four will cancel so it's like that so anyways we have set up u times v minus integral of v times du that's what we now going to get because we're always using this form so u is 4x so whatever they are remember we didn't really care it was products i just want to put them in the form v well that's a fraction with e to the power 4x over 4. okay some people may notice that 4 and 4 will cancel which is great i'll cancel it and then v which is this e to the power of 4x over 4. i have to multiply that v by du and du is 4dx so please notice that now i no longer integrate x multiplied by e to the power of x i just have e to the power of x to find antiderivative and that's something that i can do so i helped myself to get a better integrant that's the point of this section to prepare us to integrate nicer looking expressions and the nicer looking expression is the second piece because first piece does not have any integral so first piece is already a part of my answer so just the second piece is what i care about so we copy the first piece and then we're going to subtract from it e to the power of 4x but i want to divide by 4 right it's always 4 in denominator when you take antiderivative and plus the constant and we are done so if you couldn't do the substitution it's fine just break into two factors and then it should work so let's do one more let's notice that problems here are pretty much of the same type they all multiply in the x term by e to the power of x or they multiply in some x squared term by ln of x and so forth so why don't i try number nine so with e to the power of x everything is pretty clear i guess so let's do number nine but i'm going to write on the first place ln of x multiplied by x squared times dx so i commuted these two factors because i know pretty well how to find derivative of ln because remember u is in the first place and dv is in the second place so ln of x is u and then i have to find the derivative of that which is one over x with dx which is d so ln is going to disappear and that's what i really need here because the rest of it x squared dx which i call as dv i can nicely integrate 
right? Because it's a power of x. We have a formula that's our old favorite formula, right? So let us add one to power of x, right? X power of three used to be two. Now I added one, three, and I also put this in denominator, and that's my v. And this feels good because now we are ready to write down the new difference of two factors. So instead of letter U, I use ln of x, just the way they say, copy them. V is my fraction. It's x cubed over three minus. Now I have to take integral of V, which is again, x cubed over three times du, this stuff, which is one over x dx. <laughs> and notice that the second portion that integral I can take, right? Because this second portion is actually integral of uh, x squared over three. So, Let's write the answer. So the first piece I don't touch. I just keep it with me all the time. Then from the second piece, I need to put that one third here that stays. And then x power of two. So I add one and get power of three and another three is in denominator and the constant. And this is it. So it looks like the key part is to do a little bit of work so you can prepare yourself with a nice looking antiderivative. And since ln is what we can find the antiderivative of, I always keep it as u because uh, derivative because I can find all this derivative of ln. Then notice that in all of these exercises, they either have ln or e to the power. Let me try number 12. That looks a little different. It's also ln, but let me have the uh, x squared times ln of x cube here, dx. Okay. So how can I work this out? Well, first of all, I can prepare this a little bit. I can see that power rule for logarithms will bring three on the ground multiplied by ln of x times Second piece is x squared dx. So I placed my favorite ln as a u. I always want to find its derivative. And the rest is dv because I can definitely find its antiderivative. So now I need to do this separately so I don't get mixed up. So we copy this as a u. The other piece, x squared dx is dv. And then we're going to find the derivative of one piece and antiderivative of the other piece. So we follow the same exact pattern in every single exercise. Just don't put this thing here. This thing needs in the second part, right? Should be careful. So you integrate the second piece. And first, you just differentiate. So for the first piece, you have three, the constant that always stays. Now it's multiplied by one over x, that's derivative of ln, right? Times dx. And this is our du. And this is a good start. For the second, it's x cubed over three. But you see, Alex, looks like it's the same thing as you just did in the previous exercise. Yes, see? The idea is these problems are pretty much all the same. 
That's the main thing to understand. So they just don't look very attractive. But once you, I would say, redo the same problems that I do today, sometime tomorrow, hopefully, then you'll be fine with this. So let me set this up. So instead of you, now I have that. Three elements. Okay. Whatever it is, it just comes. Times V, so I multiply it by that fraction. X cubed over three. Now that feels good. That's a good start. Then I have to minus from that the integral. And now integral is V times du. Okay, so I copy V, that's again x cubed over three times du. So all of that, three, one over x, dx. So if you look at the previous exercise, how it was done, you will see that it's really repeating pretty much all of the steps. So here we have only x cubed times the length of x because three is a numerator and in denominator minus again three will cancel as well as x will cancel so we just have x squared dx and then i will be able to find anti derivative in fact you probably notice that very often i find the anti derivative once and then after we simplifying we have to find antiderivative of that x squared dx once again, right? It's right here. So it'd be uh, x cubed over 3, and then the constant. So we have integration by parts. That's how they call this formula. So you say one part is here, and then the other part, and then you produce these two parts, the difference. But I think I'm not going to ask you for a quiz because I know this formula is what you probably want to give a little bit of a thought because when you see it first time, it's so easy to get a little bit mixed up in it. So what I want to do is problem number 23 that will actually expect us to do this parts two times let's do it x squared times e to the power of x dx and it's a product so when i set my first factor as letter u and second as dv when i take a derivative of that x squared i will lower the power of x by one so it'll be 2x with dx right and the other piece which is e to the x dx it doesn't really care if i integrate it or if i differentiate it it stays the same right that's favorite formula so it's just e to the x same thing is equal to v but now when i do the setup so set up uv minus integral of vg right? that's our new formula look at what we're going to have to integrate letter u is replaced with x squared times letter v is e to the power of x Okay, great. Then we need to minus from this integral of v times du. So again, instead of v, I put e to the power of x. But look at what we have for du. 2x. And we again have the product of two pieces so again i must use parts so let me do this separately so i have to copy this 
first product all the time. So what I do is I wanna integrate negative two I can take out. And then there is a X on the first position and E to the power of X is in the second position. So this is same thing that I have right, to integrate. And if I again replace X with letter U and E to the X DX with DV, I will lower the power of X again. Look at this. Derivative of X is one, so it's just DX, which is DU. And antiderivative of E to the X is the same thing, and that's equal to V. And as usual, we have to write U times V minus integral of VD, right? That's what we have to utilize. So negative two is still present. Negative two is on the outside. U, that's X times V, that's E to the X minus integral of V, that's E to the X times DU DX. So what I'm gonna do is take care of that antiderivative. So I can put minus two here on the outside times X e to the X. So first part will never touch. Second part, integrating e to the X, we get the same thing. And people say plus the constant. Okay. I just keep constant on the outside. So the reason I did it separately is because now I need to replace this result instead of my integral. Because we have to continue with that the original exercise. So we have to keep that x squared e to the x the way it is minus. Now the result is here. So the result was minus two. I just copied x times e to the x and minus e to the x. You see? And then there's a constant. You say, but well, that's a minus constant. Constant is any number. You can put plus with it, minus with it, multiply it by 10 or by one half. It's still going to be the same constant. So it looks like I can write out the answer with two minuses, we have a plus, right? So what I'm going to do is distribute that number two over the parentheses and write it a little bit nicer. So it's x squared times e to the power of x plus, then we multiply by two, so I got two x e to the power of x, and then negative e. So it'll be negative two e to the x and the constant. So it looks like two times I did this procedure using a formula integrated by parts. So that's pretty much all we care about. In section 4.7, we usually skip. I will tell you a few words about it next time. And turns out the chapter is over. So on Thursday, we're going to do a problem from next chapter. I just want to show you. Next chapter turns out does more exercises with finding the antiderivatives. And it turns out that we are going to not worry about applications to economics or to life sciences, because I know that some people don't like the life sciences or other sciences. So I'm going to do section 5.3. That will be our last section that we need for this class. And actually, 
the final exam will be two weeks from today on Tuesday, I believe it's May 2nd. And I will send it to you by email, just like I did with the midterm. So it's gonna be pretty much the same everything. So the final is same as a midterm. So I will do the review next week. So this coming Thursday, I wanna look at section 5.3. And then we're going to the following week, look at the exercises related to the final. I will tell you what be on that so you will get a pretty clear picture of what to study. So let me go to the contents of the textbook and uh, tell you what sections we covered since the midterm, right? So since the midterm, we worked on chapters two, three, and four. So in the chapter two, we used to graph various polynomial functions. So in chapter two, we had first four sections. So for the homework, we should did probably a while ago, the sections 2.1 through 2.4. Then in chapter three, we looked at 3, 1, 3, 2, and we also looked a little bit at 3.5. So that's from chapter three. And then we looked at the chapter four just now, right? And we also did a few sections from four. So we looked at Antiderivative story. So we basically concentrated on 4.5 section, but we also did 4.1. And then I can let you move to section 4.5. And today we looked at section 4.6 also. We're going to talk more about it. And finally, my plan is to look at. 5.3 on Thursday. So you don't have to look at it right now on your own. We're going to look at it together. We're going to do problems together in 5.3. And then next week, finish with 5.3 and to discuss the final because week after next, there will be a final exam that, again, will be sent to you by email. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. So that's our plan for the rest of semester because not much time left. So what I want to do is stop to record for now.